but we're going to kick it off now because, uh, you know, it is 730 and, um, you know, we're, we're super excited. Uh, you know, the first, um, the, the first person joining us tonight, um, is Zach Kitzmiller. Um, and he is the CEO and founder of Kitzmiller Design Solutions. And I'm sure many of you have probably seen some of his work on social media and it's, one of those things that is really impressive. Um, you know, he works with, you know, many people throughout the U S um, on a, on a remote basis with, with, uh, you know, landscape design and, um, you know, so we're, we're, we're super excited to, you know, kick it off with Zach. So thank you for uh, joining us tonight, Zach. Yeah, thank you. Super excited to have you on. Oh, I think you might be muted, Zach. Thank Can you hear me now? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Great. And um, so, so Zach, can you just give us a, um, you know, we're going to dive, dive into a lot of the details tonight, but can you give us a little background about yourself, um, you know, and what, you know, a little bit about Kits Miller Design Solutions as well? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thank you again for having me. I, I love hanging out with you guys and hopefully we can talk a little bit tonight about some things that'll help, help people out. So I'm excited. Um, I started in the industry probably, I think it was maybe eight or nine years ago now. Um, I worked with uh, a couple of local contractors, um, who did, you know, your, your general maintenance and some design build work as well. And, you know, I started really from, from nowhere. I didn't have any formal education or background. Um, I started with, you know, simple, simple projects that, that really didn't have designs involved. Um, and then it turned into, you know, planting plans and, and those types of designs. And then before long, we were we were really, um, you know, deep into the outdoor living, you know, hardscaping deck, stuff like that. So I um, I started really from from nowhere when it comes to the design part of, of this industry. Um, I, I sold a lot of jobs. I, I project managed. I worked with our guys in the field and things like that. And I got a lot of experience for probably four or five years or so um in the field and you know through that time period i built design processes and sales processes and things um as i learned and, and you know grew within my roles and things like that and it just came to a point where I, a few years ago i started my business and um you know i i i could tell the pain that a lot of design and sales people in our industry feel i could i experienced that myself um and really the design build firm in general when it comes to and design and, and projects and things. And so we started the business to offer um, design services and solutions for um, anyone from being an owner operator, you know, doing everything on their own to, you know, larger firms that have a design team on staff or something like that. We, we really just help um, these organizations out with um, design fulfillment and, and things like that. So that's kind of where we, where I and my company got started. We've got a small team today and, and we work with uh, dozens of clients all over the country and it's been a lot of fun and challenging but a lot of fun so that's that's kind of how we got started no that's great, great. and i love yeah. your work zach like each Thank time you. i see a design i'm i'm so impressed so i'm, I'm sure we're gonna learn you know some tips here and yeah we'll yeah and uh, and i know yeah. you touched on challenges zach um yeah you know i think you know a lot of it starts with with the sales process you know, can you, can you walk us through how, what you do and, you know, the design work relates to that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that it's, it's tough to talk about design in the design build world without talking about sales process. Um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not the authority on it. There's other people out there a lot smarter than me when it comes to, you know, dialing that in, but it, it's really tough to be successful in the design space without having, um, the right sales process and, and it's going to be different for a lot of different people i mean there are things that do work across the board um there are things that work better for others you know depending on size and, and location and things like that um but i think ultimately it comes down to you know you, you have to be able to either charge homeowners for the design work that you do um as part of your sales process um or you have to be really really good at, at um absorbing the cost of design through your overhead um the reason i i give credit to that second option is because there are some some firms that do it 
um, really well. They know how much they're going to spend throughout the year on designs, whether it's in-house or outsourced. Um, if it's $50,000 a year, and they're a million dollar company, for example, you know, they, they know how many leads they're going to get. You know, they, they know, they know the numbers, right? Um, unfortunately, or I don't know if it's fortunate, unfortunate or not, but most organizations that we've found, um, they don't do that. And so what ends up happening is, you know, design becomes this like thing that, that the, the organization has to do, but doesn't want to do. And it costs money, whether you do it in house or you outsource it. And then that sucks because then the homeowner doesn't always go with, go with you. And there's just all these different problems that come into place. So that's what's so important about the sales process in, in relation to design is, you know, get it nailed down to where you're either over, you know, you're, you're getting it accounted for in your overhead or you're charging the homeowner for design. And, and that's not 50 bucks. It's not 500 bucks. It's, you know, it's probably a couple thousand dollars. So if you're doing outdoor living spaces, patios, decks, pools, things like that, um, it, it's going to be a couple thousand dollars because until you pay for staff in house or until you outsource it, you know, you're going to have some, some cost there. So I think the first thing really is just getting the sales process down um, get comfortable with, you know, having those, those conversations with homeowners about, Hey, this is, we're a design build firm. This is what we do. This is the process, you know, have it outlined for them, have the cost there. And, and it's not just something that you're going to say, you know, Oh, we have to do this homeowner. It's, you have to believe in it and you have to, you have to know the value of it. Um, if you're going to convey that to them. Um, and that's really what I've seen over the last few years. That's the biggest struggle, I think. Um, and so we, we help our clients and we try to help anybody that, you know, wants to listen, um, you know, how to have those conversations and say, you know, my job is not to our job in the industry is not to prove our worth to, to you, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, uh, by giving you free services. Right. I mean, you wouldn't go out and lay pavers for free to, to get the, the other work. Right. I mean, you just they either pay for it or they don't. So it's the same thing with design and, and, you know, your reviews, your website, those things are, are what is going to earn the business from the homeowner. When it comes down to putting pencil to paper, you know, you have to start getting paid for that. And I think once you figure that sale part of the sales process out, you start charging for designs, you know, sure start somewhere. You don't have to start at, you know, thousands of dollars, but start somewhere and get comfortable with those conversations with homeowners and, and dial that sales process in. And once you do that, I think, you know, you've overcome the biggest challenge because that, after that it comes the fun part and the design work and, you know, really wowing the homeowners and, and getting that work. So um, that's probably the biggest thing is the right sales process. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've spoken to a lot yeah. of business owners before that, um, you know, they don't charge for the design projects and they're spending so much time, hours on it, and they're so skilled and very good at their uh, designs, but then they're not charging for it. So, yeah. and I think something to think about to make maybe your process a little bit more streamlined is maybe making some design templates that you have. You say, hey, I have A, B, and C. Yeah. You can either choose from this or I can custom make it and maybe that you charge yeah. Yeah. You know, the thousand dollars or whatever it is, right? Absolutely. And, and that's honestly another another thing that I wrote down to talk about was, you know, the right deliverables is, you know, we, we figured out at our firm and, and again, it's, you know, everybody does a little bit different, but we figured out, you know, working with contractors and design build pros throughout the whole country we figured out that there's probably about four deliverables that, that matter um, design deliverables. And you can go to our website, you can see what those are, but they, they do range from being very simple and uh, creative to being very technical or very, very high end or, or, or costly, so, so to speak. Um, and that's because there's different properties, there's different homeowners, there's different projects. Um, you know, not unless you're doing the same exact job every time. And there's companies out there that do that. You know, if you're one of those companies, then, yeah, you can streamline things a little bit more. Um, but if you're the average hardscaper or outdoor living, you know, specialist or, or builder, chances are you're, you're doing something a little bit different um, each time. And it's for a different type of homeowner each time. Um, and so with that, you know, you're going to have it's, it's more beneficial to have different options that 
um, you know, work for those different, those different projects. So I, I would highly encourage anyone to figure out what those are. You know, if you're trying to sell a $5,000 design, that's got all the bells and whistles, some people will buy that. And, and a lot of people won't, um, you could be selling napkin sketches for 500 bucks or something that's very basic. And some people will buy that and others will go to a more sophisticated outfit because they're, they're looking for more. So you're exactly right, Carla. And I think it is important, you know, it's part of what makes up, you know, a successful design process. Part of it is the right sales process. Another part of it is the right deliverables, making sure that you've got some different options that make sense for all the types of projects that you do. Yeah. And, um, Zach, so, you know, I know that there's, you know, some, some, some customers out there, you know, homeowners, um, you know, that, you know, you know, may not be the, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, you know, you know, that there's some people that are not the easiest to kind of deal with, or, um, yeah. you know, and you want to be as, um, re realistic, right. And use your functional mindset and know that certain things based on your experience should be done. Um, you know, yeah. how, how do you approach situations like that where, um, yeah. you know, based on your experience, you know, like there's only so much you can do there. Have, have you ever yeah. run stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's probably the, probably the biggest challenge next to charging for design. The biggest challenge is, you know, you get a lead, you get a homeowner that comes to you, Hey, I want a backyard space, a patio or something. And, you know, it could be $5,000. It could be $500,000. It's just, it's not like, a lot of industries where it's the same price really no matter what right it's a, the range of, of pricing is not very big where in our industry and i'm sure there's others out there but i feel like we're kind of unique in the sense that a patio to one lead or customer is you know something completely different than to another so it's really important obviously to have conversations up front again having those uncomfortable conversations with the homeowner about the scope of work and, and, and where that falls pricing wise. I've, I've told a lot of people in the industry over the years, the single greatest skill that you can have as a design build sales slash designer is to know your ballpark pricing, like the back of your hand. Um, you just have to know it. You have to study it, know it, learn it, keep updating it. You have to be able to have a conversation with somebody to say $50,000 works for this, or it's going to be 150, right? Um, but a lot of guys, they get scared about that and they, they don't know. And they say, well, I just don't know what it's going to cost because, you know, I just don't know what it's going to be in the end. Sure. You're going to be off a little bit, but to have a 10 or 20% margin on a ballpark price is going to qualify that, that homeowner. And it's going to save you so much time and headache. And, you know, when we're talking about, you know, saving money and saving time and things like that, it's going to save so much of that because you know that what you're going to design and what you're going to propose is something the homeowner is going to actually write a check for. So you definitely have to have that conversation up front. I think ultimately from a design standpoint, you know, function is super important. It's probably more important than the creativity um, or the creative or artistic aspects of design. Um, I know some, some hardscapers will, you know, I can't create anything that, that looks cool or that's creative and, to be honest, 80% of it is, is function. You know, if the space functions and the space works, um, that is to me a lot more valuable to the homeowner, to the average homeowner, right. Um, then to have something that's super unique or super creative. So we like to take the approach at our, at our firm to, to, to work with both of those elements. When you understand the function of kitchens and pergolas and pavilions and patios and decks and pools and things, and then you also, um, you know, learn the creative side of it with materials and things like that. You'll begin to design with both of those things in mind. But if you're not an experienced designer or you struggle with those things, I would just say focus on the function. Focus on, you know, the, the homeowner's budget is X. The, 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 the wish list is X. And we're going to put something together that is buildable, that's functional. And if at the end we can be a little creative with it, then that would be, you know, a perfect situation. So hopefully that's helpful. Great. Yeah. And no, no, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and we, we love the whole topic of, you know, outsourcing, using remote staff, um, yeah. you know, and we can geek out about that because that's what we do. You know, we do the re remote bookkeeping and CFO services, um, yeah. you know, and, you know, especially Zach, when, when you're looking at something where, 
businesses are already struggling finding labor, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now you have to find specialized labor, which I know that that's also a problem you have, right, Zach? Like, or not necessarily a problem that you're not overcoming, but it's it's yeah. a challenge within a business, right? And, um, you know, which which to me I think is one of the advantage of of outsourcing is is you get this team of people that are specialized that, um, you know that that really understand it. There's less friction with it, and um, you know you can really step in there and um, yeah. you know help out. Yeah. Can you go over that a little bit, Zach? You know how outsourcing something like this could could be, you know, a solution. Yeah, like absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think the first thing is I, I will say just from from our firm and what what we do with our clients is we've got we've got clients who generate ten, twenty, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a year in, in profit. Uh, in margin just by working with us alone. So the way that our firm is set up to work with contractors is, you know, we are going to come in, if your sales process is where it is, you know, where it needs to be and, and you've got things streamlined and, and we'll help you with that. But when things are working the right way, um, you know, our, our service is meant to be resold to the homeowner. And a lot of, I think some people forget that it's easy to forget. You know, you think of outsourcing something as an expense and, oh, well, we just have to live with it. But I, I've got clients who literally, they, they generate a profit off of, of what we do for them. We charge a thousand, they charge 2000. Um, and it's designed to work that way. So I would say first and foremost, don't always think of outsourcing as just an expense. It can be something that can be leveraged and be very lucrative. I, we, like I said, we've got some clients who, you know, they do very little work for that 20K extra a year. So if you're looking for something to help your margin a little bit and you're, or you've lost some somewhere else and you want to implement, you know, this is a way to do it. People are, homeowners are more educated today than ever before, I feel, on the benefit of design and that they're going to pay for it. Um, than, than ever before. The design build world is shifting back to designer and, and builder. Maybe I'm biased. I don't know because I'm just a designer, but um, I really feel like it's going back to that. It used to be like that back in the day and then design build came out and there's some really awesome firms that do it really well. But chances are in your, your area, there's probably a couple that do it really well. Most of us are contractors who are maybe kind of designing, right? Or kind of doing design build. So Ultimately, it's a way to increase your product offering without hiring any any in-house staff. Um, it looks like you've got that design team on staff. No, no homeowner has to know that you don't. Um, so it, it just gives you a professional edge. You can make money off of it or at the very least break even, um, you know, again, if you've got that sales process dialed in right. So it's, it's a really cool opportunity. We work with firms that are super small owner operators. We do all of their designs. They don't have to worry about it. They're out in the field that, like you said, they're having a tough time with labor. Um, and so they're running the machine or they're going from job to job and, and, you know, they're crazy busy. They're not necessarily blocking off four or five hours a day to get creative and, and do a design. Um, we work with medium to large size firms as well that they've got designers on staff or, you know, they've, they're, they're okay in the design department. Um, but they just need extra help and or they, there's a part of the design process that they don't do well or don't have the ability to do. And so we partner with them as well. And we, we're more of a, a supplemental resource to them. So um, I think it's super lucrative. I think that it's it's really more beneficial now than it ever has been before. Um, our capacity and, and, and throughput is going to be more than what you could obtain for you know, less, less than a quarter, you know, quarter of a million dollars probably to, to put our team in place would, would be what it would cost if you did it in house. So it really makes a lot of sense in, in a lot of different ways. Um, and it's, it has been challenging. There are some, some challenges with it, with remote work. And, um, we still need our clients to do some of the work. Um, it's not the click of a button and all of a sudden, you know, we, we produce this stuff and it's perfect every time, but, um, it's been, it's been a pretty cool experience seeing how this, just our firm, some other firms out there that do it. And I think everybody's really growing and it's working quite well. So. And you did mention like you would still need, you know, that contract mm -hmm. to do some of that work. What would, what are some of those items? 
So really, you know, we we specialize in very accurate designs, as accurate as they possibly can be. Um, and for that, you know, we're going to need some data from the field, right? Right. Um, as everybody knows, and that that's the biggest question that we get is, this is great. How in the world do you know what the slope is in this backyard or, or what this house looks like or, you know, all these different things. And we've got some things that we do on the back end that, you know, I don't know that everybody realizes those tools are out there for us to get some of that information. Um, so we rely on that, but, but we do, we rely on the contractor to go out into the field, grab elevation data with a smart level or something like that. Um, you know, take photos. We've partnered with hover, which is a really cool tool. I would recommend uh, anybody that's on the webinar. If you do design build and you do 3d design in any capacity, um, even CAD designs hover is an amazing tool. Um, you take eight photos of our structure, it's going to spit out a fully developed, you know, dimensional plan in CAD um, and then start your model in 3D. So we, we offer that and include that for all our clients. But even if you're, you know, just a regular, you know, design build firm, definitely give them a call and get signed up for it because it'll, it'll really save you a ton of time and money um, in the design process. But implementing those tools, that's what we're relying on the contractor to help us with. Um, okay. We do. We do travel some, but most of the projects that we do, um, it's a team effort. And I would say too, you know, an hour or two's time of a contractor that's in the field, it doesn't even have to be the owner operator or the, the sales or design person. It could be a foreman or it could be a, a $15 an hour, you know, part-time employee that goes out and gets that data. Um, we just, we just want the best information possible so that when we hand you back a design, it's accurate. The dimensions are accurate. We're not missing a step. We're not, I mean, we're already going to have the struggles as it is. So we want to just try to dial that in as much as possible. So, Very nice. yeah. And what are you seeing in, in regard to, um, you know, like the current market conditions within, you know, the design build industry? Yeah. So it's been an interesting year for us. Um, I mean, you guys, you know, I've, our firms work together and whatnot. Um, you know, the last couple of years have really been, um, I don't want to say easy, but I guess for lack of a better word, they've been easy when it comes to getting sales and getting clients and, and things like that. I think, you know, earlier in this year, we hit a period where I know our firm, we saw a, a huge slowdown. Um, you know, we're on the front end of things in a lot of markets throughout the country. We're not busy building projects we sold last year or over the winter. So I think we have a unique vantage point that we're, we kind of see things before many of our clients do. Yeah. Um, and so we definitely saw some slowdown. I, the thing is, is I, I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's alarming per se. I think it just requires a little more effort. I think people hold are holding onto their money more. Um, you know, it used to be, I, I want the backyard, my dream backyard, and I don't care what it costs. Hurry up, give me a design and build this thing. And now it's like, well, we need a patio, but I don't know if I'm going to spend this much money. And so it's a little bit harder, tougher sell. Um, that's why sales process is so important. But um, I think ultimately moving forward, there's still a housing shortage. We've seen some markets throughout the country that are still booming, Nashville, New Jersey, places like that where it, it, they, nobody can keep up, the materials aren't there, stuff like that. So I think ultimately our industry still has, there's still a lot of demand out there. I just don't think it's as gluttonous as it was for the last couple of years. Right. Yeah, great. And, and we do have a question uh, here. Yeah. Um, Christina said, what information do you collect during your site analysis? So the big things for us are site photos of the structure in the home. Um, we use Hover for that. It's eight okay. photos. Um, the second thing would be um, elevation data. So if you've got, if you do not have a smart level, go out, buy a smart level. They're not that much. Um, these things are, are very cool to use in the field. Some people have used them in, in for construction. They're not great for construction. I, I mean, I know some people will use them for that, but they're better for doing estimates and, and getting general slope of a backyard. So get one of those, grab us some elevation data. We're looking for how much does the yard slope? What are the elevations so that we can calculate things like steps and walls? Um, and really that's that's about it from the actual field. Um, so we want the photos, we want the elevation data. And then from there, you're gonna be able to produce a sketch or get a survey or anything else that supports the design project. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. And 
as for softwares, Zach, um, yeah. you know, what are some other softwares within the industry that you would recommend? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's really two camps as far as software goes, um, at least from my experience. There's what we would call a true CAD situation where we're using AutoCAD, SketchUp, Rhino. There's different applications out there that are true CAD based. These are high learning curve applications, in my opinion. Um, we've got a team of really talented people that are just total nerds when it comes to that type of stuff. Um, most hardscapers that are going to be doing it themselves or hiring a local designer are not going to be using a true CAD application, but I could connect you with some awesome resources. If you want to dive into that after a couple of years, in most cases, you're going to be able to get to the point where you're going to be proficient. Um, the other camp, which is a lot more popular, a little bit more, um, attainable for, for many hardscapers is, um, you know, more of your plug and play softwares, things like real time landscape architects, structure studios, um, applications that you can pick up for, you know, under a thousand bucks. It's either a one time thing or it's a, maybe a couple hundred bucks a month or something. Um, and you can learn those usually within a, a month or two and really, you know, get up to speed pretty quick and, you know, still make some pretty cool designs with them. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what design medium or, or tool that you use. Yeah. What's more important is the design itself. So that's the thing that we want to see our fellow designers and, and people in the industry focus on. Um, and then, you know, pick the tool that works for you that, that has the right look and feel and learning curve to it. And you're set. Awesome. Yeah. And we got another question here. Um, what are some uh, pros and cons of selling a design per hour versus flat fee? Yeah, that's a great question, man. I wish we had maybe 15 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next topic, right? So I would love to go into that in detail. I'll just tell you what we do and what we found that works. Always charge by the hour. Uh, design is very, very subjective amongst hardscapers and homeowners. So when you get three parties involved and different expectations are flying around, it's really, really hard to hit the nail on the head the first time, every time. And so we found that, look, we're going to charge by the hour. Um, we're going to do the, the best that we absolutely can with the information that we've been given. Um, now, we do set those expectations of what the cost is going to be. Um, we've we've grown quite a bit in our company as we've developed how that works exactly. But if you're a design build firm and you want to start charging for designs tomorrow, there, there's nothing wrong with starting with a flat rate um, price. In fact, if you've not sold any designs up until this point, I would start with a flat rate, whether, whether it's 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, figure out a price point that you're comfortable with in the beginning, get some designs done, do a really good job, track your time, figure out what you have in it. What does the software cost? What does the computers cost? Things like that. And then you can move to it. You'll, you'll find that you'll lose money on some and make a ton on others and things like that. Then you can dial it into where you can find out what that hourly rate is, or you can work with somebody like us and we'll help you figure it out pretty quick. So awesome. Awesome, Zach. And, you know, especially, you know, I think that that's a great point, Zach, you know, especially if you're just just starting out, um, you know, because you may be making, you know, and you may be very confident with the whole build part of your project, you yeah. know, knowing that that, you know, regardless, even if you even broke even or, you know, whatever it was on the design section that you, you will, you'll make a healthy profit on the build part. So yeah. um, it's a great way to learn as yeah. well. Um, and Absolutely. Be, before we get Tommy in here, Zach, uh, yeah. you know, if you can just, you know, let us know if there's anything else, uh, you know, you'd like to add, add here to the conversation and then also where, where people can, can reach out to you as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's been good. Like I said, I, I could talk about this stuff for hours and days and, and all that. So I, I know we can't certainly do that. But um, I, first of all, I'm, I'm obviously happy to help anybody in the industry. I'm on social media everywhere. Our company is as well. If you ever have a question, reach out, um, send me a DM. I'm happy to jump on a call. E even if you're not a client, you just have a question or you, you, know, you want help figuring something out get my, my thoughts or my team or whoever, we're happy to help. Um, so definitely do that. You can, you can find us online everywhere. Um, our website's a great place to go. We've got a, a tab on there, Design Build Pros. Just go ahead, go to that tab and um, you'll be able to see some really cool things that we can help with. And, and you can draw some inspiration from that as well, whether you're, you know, you just 
create your own design process and deliverables, you know, feel free to pull from that and get your own thing going too, or adjust what you have and, and do that for sure. So, um, but Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And it's been fun talking with you guys and hope to do it again soon sometime. Awesome, yeah. Zach. Yeah, thank nice you. Talking with you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. And, and and we put um, Zach's website within the comments as well right now. And stay tuned because we got Tommy Lather from Takeoff Monkey yeah. joining us here. So, um, yeah. But but thank you, Zach. Nice thank you All right. Much. Absolutely, my pleasure. Have a good night, guys. All right. Yeah. See ya. Awesome. Yeah. So you know, as we as we wait for uh, you know Tommy to join us here um you know i think it's you know something great um you know when it comes to especially in a potential you know recession or you know potential downturn looking at areas where you can really maximize and use your current clients um you know to maybe generate a little bit more more revenue um you know and and i think that's that's really what you know um can can help especially if if this allows you to get more and more specialized within the work that you perform, um, you know, and what that does is it, is it helps to, um, you know, put, put you in a position where, um, where other companies may be struggling to get work in, in a recession, companies that are more specialized and have, have a better brand, um, and do, do better work are often the ones that do, do better in a downturn. So just a quick tip there. Um, but, Hey, Tommy, how are you? Hey, guys, I'm doing great. How about y'all? Good, good. Excited to have you on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Always good to see you guys and, and Zach. Uh, Zach and I met on Instagram, um, of all places, uh, about a year and a half ago. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, no, and, and um, you know, and 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 for those that are, that are not aware, um, you know, Tommy runs a an amazing operation over there, Takeoff Monkey, um, and you know, is truly an industry leader in the space. And we're we're super excited to dive dive in here. And um, you know, I guess Tommy, can you give us a brief brief background and a little bit about what what Takeoff Monkey does? Sure. So we are a takeoff service. Um, we we do get asked a lot what exactly is a takeoff. So. Um, it's every time there's a construction project, there's usually a set of blueprints or drawings like what Zach creates for his clients. So the contractor to bid it accurately, they need to know how many of what they need to include in their bid. So these are materials, mulch, um, and areas that need to be tilled or scraped or excavated. Uh, someone's got to come up with all those quantities. And it's a pretty tedious, time-consuming process, and and that's that's what we do for for our customers. Beautiful, wow. awesome, um, and so it's so it's a totally outsourced solution, right? Correct. We're a hundred percent remote. Um, we're a hundred percent digital. Uh, we we communicate through email, Dropbox. Um, that's, and the phone once in a while, um, our phone does, does ring sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. And, you know, we were, we were touching on this with Zach and I think it's a, you know, as I mentioned already, it's something that we get excited about, but can, can you go over a little bit how, how that looks, how that relationship looks, uh, you know, that outsourced um, look versus, um, you know, companies that, that do it in-house and attempt it that way. Sure. Um, so uh, when I started in early 2019, it, it was a little bit more of an uphill battle. Uh, a, a common rebuttal would be, you know, I really like having someone in my office doing this so I can ask them questions, uh, so, so I can look over their shoulder. Nothing wrong with that. But then COVID happened and everybody went home. And then suddenly remote workers were fairly common and, and accepted whether they liked it or not. And so the concept of outsourcing this process didn't seem so foreign anymore. Um, that combined with our, our accuracy and our turnaround time, we, we try to make it really hard for our customers to, to say no, uh, whether they like the concept of outsourcing or not. <laughs> cool, awesome. Uh, and, um, you know, I would imagine that, uh, you know, there's definitely 
you know, software is involved with this. Um, you know, can you give us a little rundown of, of what that looks like? Sure. So, so our primary software is on-screen takeoff or OST. Um, it's not ours. We didn't develop it. Um, it's built by on center software out of Houston, Texas. Um, it is expensive. Um, it's, uh, it's about 2,500, three grand a pop per license. Um, but it is, uh, it's for, it's for life. Uh, I have a license that I've had since 2009 and it still works just fine. Um, so it, it is more expensive, uh, but that is also one of the benefits of working with us. If you're not cranking out five, six, 10 bids a week, and you don't want to shell out three grand for a license, um, you can use us. We use it for you and you get all the benefits of that software. Um, nice. We also use Bluebeam Review, uh, a little bit slower, most of the same functionality, but Bluebeam and OST definitely are our primary. Awesome. And, and uh, you know, can you take us through, I know that, that you have some um, examples of some of the things that you, you handle, uh, Sure. Can, can you share that with us and run run through some of that? Yeah. Um, it's not working. All right. So, um, ninety nine percent of what we do is commercial construction. So, landscape architects draw up these plans, uh, and we start with something like this. It's it's black and white, uh, there's page after page, there's all these little symbols. Nobody knows what they mean. It, it really does take a significant amount of time and a lot of concentration to really decipher what these drawings mean. So we go through with OST and we start color coding. So everywhere you see color, that's, that's a measurement or a count. So here we're measuring sod or some kind of turf uh, we're counting trees, we're counting plants, um, everything you would need to know, shovel cut edge or steel edging, uh, we go through and, and color code it. That way, when, when we're done, we can send this to our customer and they have a visual of what we've actually included. It's very easy to see if something was missed. Um, and, and then there's many other uses for, for these takeoffs once um, later we'll, we'll talk about here in a minute but then we take at the end of all this we've got quantities for every single thing so we put it into an excel worksheet which seems pretty basic but you know you can copy and paste out of it but what i think a lot of people don't realize is this output is fairly customizable so this is this is one we we for a customer that that gave me permission all of our work is confidential, but um, this is a, a, a format that a customer came up with that works with their estimating software. So this, this is everything you need to know. It's all categorized. You've got all your sizes, um, units. A, a lot of items will actually have a second quantity for like trees. So it'll tell you there's six and their footprint takes up 170 square feet. Um, we do all this, and then for this particular customer, we built a little macro in here. You click this button, and in seconds, it generates this text file. And it doesn't look like anything, but our, our customer can take this little text file and drag it into their estimating software, and their software will read all of our data and appropriately categorize it, classify each cost, add the quantities where they need to go. And all our customer has to do now is assign material costs and labor rates and, and the bid's done. So no more keystroking, no more copying and pasting. It eliminates that margin of human error, transposing data from, from one place to another. Uh, and, and this is something that we, we've done uh, five or six times now successfully, and it's it's a huge time savings. Um, I, I really actually enjoy doing these. I, I wish we were doing these for more, uh, more of our guys, but that that's kind of the, the process in a nutshell. Um, this, this particular project did not come with irrigation drawings, um, but they need irrigation. So we can take care of that too. So we 
do a, a, a full irrigation design. Um, same thing with quantities. We've got, um, you know, we every single thing you need. Uh, we do a watering schedule, a valve schedule, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a turnkey design, just like you would get from a landscape architect. Uh, we do hundreds of these uh, each month and um, people seem to really like it. That's great. What's the, what is the turnaround time on something like this? So material takeoffs, our average turnaround time is just over 45 hours. And that's, that's the time that we received the request via email to the time that our completed packet hits our customer's inbox. So about two days. For mm -hmm. irrigation design, our turnaround time is 75 hours. So three or four days, of course, it depends on size. If, if we have a monster in either material takeoff or irrigation design, we may ask for an extra day or so, but we really work hard to stick to that 48 hours. Wow. That's great. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of details here, uh, you know, have you seen where the customer maybe wants to see things that are um, maybe compare changes, you know, or two different options, stuff like that? Is that something that you see often? Oh, oh, yeah, very often. Let me turn this off. Um, yeah, commercial jobs change all the time. So we are frequently taking the contract drawings or the IFC drawings doing a full takeoff on those and then ASIs or PRs or some form of change comes out and, and then we'll, we'll compare them. The, usually the general contractors are only gonna wanna see, they don't wanna see a whole new bit with every single thing on the job. They wanna know what has been added, what has been deleted and what has been changed. So we're able to take the two takeoffs, put them side by side and give our customers a, a quick summary of exactly those changes, the, the ads and deducts and um, makes change orders a snap. That's awesome. And uh, Daniel just uh, asked here, uh, we just started using Arbor Gold. Can you convert your data with the software like that? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Usually it's a CSV or a text file. Um, we use some simple V lookup tables, um, a little VB macro, and yeah, we, we can absolutely make something work with, with Arbor Gold. Awesome. And cool. And and how does this relate to uh, materials with, with suppliers um, um, and the material list? So so our, our takeoff, our completed takeoff, like that worksheet, that Excel worksheet I showed you, that essentially is the materials list. So a lot of our customers are forwarding that on to their suppliers to price. Um, we do have a couple of uh, other little hidden macros built into our spreadsheets that, that will help you get material pricing from a couple different suppliers. So uh, there's that built in there. Um, but, but, but yeah, our, we, we generate the list that suppliers are, are pricing. Very nice. Um, and do you, do you find that the contractors that you work with, do they share these takeoffs with the customer? Uh, some of them do. I wish more of them would. Um, I thought you were going to say with each other. I was going to say no. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, sharing the takeoff with your client, I think it's a great way to show your client the amount of effort you put in to, to bid the work. I think that, that says something about you, know, you as a company and your attention to detail, things like that. It's also a really great visual aid for your general contractor who just wants to glance at something and understand, do I have coverage? Do I have turf or something going in these areas? They can look at that and, um, and, and tell pretty quickly. Um, I've had takeoffs be added as an exhibit to the contract before. Um, they're also fantastic guides in the field um, to, to help, uh, help the, the guys know what goes where, uh, sort of uh, plant by number or paved by, by, by color rather. Um, so yeah, the, the takeoff has a lot of uses. It's not just for bids. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Um, and, you know, I, 
so there, I would imagine that there's definitely a lot of advantages to, um, you know, w- working with a team like like Takeoff Monkey, and it'll make the process really efficient, ultimately. And um, and have have you seen that that companies are then able to um, improve the bid volume, and then also like I- increase the amount of you know times that they win contracts and stuff like that. Absolutely. Uh, we, we did a sort of informal case study on a, on a pretty good sized company uh, last year and end of 2020 and into 21. And they increased their bid output by about three X without hiring anybody else. Um, of course, they, they had our expense, um, but our expense was uh, a little bit more than the cost of a part time person. So they 3X their bid output. A lot of our cus- customers work under the, the assumption that if they bid $10 million and they're, they're gonna close 10% of it, well, if I can bid $30 million, you know, that's a higher, higher amount of money that I'm gonna close um, than, than just bidding a million bucks. Sure. And can you walk us through what, you know, what the pricing structure looks like either when both when companies work with an outsource solution like yourself and then also if they try to handle this in-house as well sure so so we charge by the project um and we charge by page so it's it's only pages that have counts and measurements um there there are material schedules there are details notes specifications things like that that we'll reference but unless we're marking things up, coloring them in, taking measurements, we're not charging for it. So as you can imagine, we, we lose on some and we win big on, on others. But at the end, uh, we were trying to find a quantifiable way for our customer to look at a project and decide, is this worth the expense um, or the added expense? So because we are a direct expense and you do receive an invoice with actual job names, it gets a little bit more scrutiny in the accounting office versus doing it in-house. You have payroll, um, you have computers, you have software, you have these invoices that just sort of uh, get sucked up into overhead and, and aren't necessarily assigned to, to specific jobs. So um, we are looked at differently for, for that reason, but um, you know, we charge by the project. We don't have any recurring fees. There's no subscriptions. There's no minimums. Uh, you literally just pay us for, for what we do, um, on a monthly or weekly basis. That's great. Um, and, and if anyone has any questions, please, you know, type it over there in the chat. Um, you know, and, uh, so, you know, you, you work with a lot of contractors, Tommy, what do you feel is, is something that, um, you know, contractors that, you know, what, do, what is their responsibility throughout this process in order for this, for this takeoff to be successful? Sure. Um, the, the biggest thing that for some reason we seem to have to fight for sometimes is scope. Um, you know, if a customer comes to us and says landscape, um, that, that has <laughs> about 400 different, different meanings to us. You know, to one guy, it's, it's including pavers, one guy, it, it's just planting. Um, really, if, if our customers could just be just very, very, very specific about which scopes they want, that way we're not doing extra work uh, and they're not coming back asking us to add something uh, on bid day or, or the day before. Um, you know, and early on, I talked about how we can customize our output. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to do that when, when we produce these takeoffs and we send it to a customer, it's, it's theirs, it's theirs only. Um, so we can make it whatever they want. So if there's a format where you want the size first, or you want, um, the container size in a different column, uh, whatever you can think of, we're, we're more than happy to do it. If that makes your process that much faster and easier. Very nice. Um, and, you know, there, there are some people here that, um, you know, are kind of m- maybe starting to enter into the realm of doing work that will require takeoffs. Um, you know, do you have any, any beginner tips for, for people like that? Sure. Yeah. Um, takeoffs are, it's, 
It's the biggest uh, stumbling block in the estimating office. It is by far the most time consuming process, but it's also the most important. You're coming up with your quantities, which is your, your single largest factor in your bid, which then becomes a contract, which then becomes a pay application. So if you have errors in your takeoff, there's gonna be a ripple effect all the way down to your pay application and how much money you're actually getting paid. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the, the takeoff is, it, it's just, it's, they suck. Um, it takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't do anything else while you're doing it. Um, you can't watch TV while you're doing it. It takes your full and undivided attention. Um, and, and that's, that's where, where we come in. Um, yeah. but yeah, with, with getting into commercial construction in general, um, I wouldn't expect to, you know, be cashing in million dollar contracts in your first month or even your first year. Um, the, the work that we're seeing like this week probably won't start going into the ground for about 18 months from now. So it's, it's a really slow game. It's a, it's a long game. Um, and if you bid something and it was a huge pain in the ass and your, your client likes your bid, you're going to bid it again and again and probably 10 more times before you get to a contract. Um, you know, when I first started in commercial construction, it drove me absolutely bananas seeing the same project over and over again. But then you just kind of get just whatever, just, you know, water off your back. But it's it, it, it can be infuriating. Um, also, the level of drawings that are put out, um, Sometimes the, the architect will produce like a conceptual set or an SD set or a DD set, and there's very little detail. And it leaves a lot to the imagination as far as what's required in the landscape. And, you know, it baffled me, like, well, why are we pricing? Like, everyone's gonna have a different opinion of what should go here and how much should go there. Um, you know, usually the, the case is the, the architect drew that as a guide for the client, the owner, to sort of get an idea what what they were going to design, but then a general contractor gets their hands on it and they send it out for pricing, and uh, it's just part of the game, man. It's um, it's just part of it. Great, and um, you know, for for those that do have an in-house team, um, what are things that 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 you've seen? Because um, I know that you've you've worked with you know, larger companies within the landscape, um, you know, space versus, you know, and then also, you know, having this business, you know, what are, what are some pieces of advice for people like that? Sure. So in-house team, um, we don't want to replace anyone. We're not out for anyone's job that's doing this. <laughs> in-house team is, is great. Um, there, there is no better way to get to know a set of drawings than doing the takeoff. That, that is just a proven fact. Um, so if you're doing it in-house, um, you can still use us. We have plenty of guys that only send us the super messed up, the super complex, <laughs> super last minute, um, someone's on vacation, things like that. We're, we're still here for you. But um, the uh, just concentration is the biggest thing. Um, you know, you can listen to music while you're doing it. And this is me. Other people may be different, but. Um, you really can't be answering the phone. You can't be texting your girlfriend. You, you gotta be staring at this thing. Um, and it's, it's really hard. It's really hard on the eyes. It can be hard on your back. If you're like me and have poor posture, um, it's, it's a grueling, <laughs> grueling task. Um, it is oddly satisfying, but, um, yeah, uh, give those people some space, give them their own office where they can shut the door and let them do their thing. Um, if you're constantly throwing wrenches at them, uh, you're, you're gonna have mistakes and, and, and an unhappy employee. What are some of the skill sets that you look for with um, you know, the people creating the takeoff? So uh, we look for folks that have uh, some engineering background. So they, right. they can understand that maybe they already know some of the, the plan lingo, all the abbreviations and things. They know how to, how to read grade lines. Um, so that's, that, that's always a plus. But 
most of our, our guys are, are very, very routine oriented. Um, they're, they're very, they, they stick to, to a process, they trust it and, and they repeat it over and over again. I would imagine that some of my guys, if you put the, the cup of sugar on the left of the coffee maker instead of the right, that that would kind of throw a wrench in their day. Um, <laughs> it's Like I said, it, it's just a monotonous, tedious task. And, yeah. and you, you gotta be able to concentrate. If you're, if you're someone who is easily distracted, um, it's, it's, it may not, it just may not be for you. It may not be the best fit. Cause like I said, the, the more times you're distracted, the, the bigger your margin for error gets, um, yeah. you've got colors kind of going over top of one another and you lose your train of thought <laughs> and, and it, it can, it can be costly. This yeah. sounds like accounting. Yeah. Like, I feel like I can do <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You yeah. have to be detail oriented. You have to concentrate. Uh, if you move over a decimal, that wouldn't be okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, you know, the scale, like when you set the scale yeah. on your drawings, um, yeah. if, if you nudge that one way, maybe you have 10,000 square feet of something, but if you nudge that yeah. scale and it goes off, now you may end up with 11 square feet or, or 10 million yeah. square feet. Um, yeah. So it's just little tiny details like that you really got to watch. Have to be yeah. very detailed. You don't want to be doing a takeoff for the whole square footage of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> no. The bigger, <laughs> the, the, the yeah. No, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and going back to the whole, you know, outsourcing, you know, we know companies that, that, that utilize takeoff monkey also, you know, kits Miller did, design solutions and, you know, also seeing a lot of companies within the green industry space um, where, especially companies that are looking to scale, um, one of the biggest costs is, you know, if you do want to scale fast, sometimes you have to hire people ahead of time um, or you're going to be struggling to get work done and stuff like that. And this is a perfect example of something that you can utilize in your company um, where you don't have to hire a full-time person you know, because you may not necessarily have full-time work yet. So that's why fractional services, remote services like Takeoff Monkey um, are beneficial for, for businesses, especially, um, you know, and a lot of people know about this sort of method when maybe you're, you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand revenue up to three, 4 million, right. When, when, when fractional services are used more out of a necessity, but you can use these companies, you can use these methods, um, even as a larger company, because it, it's, it's the same idea. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and, and this is something from, from an accounting perspective that we highly recommend because yes. sometimes things that are the most obvious, um, choice, or maybe your, your friend has a, has a landscape company that they do takeoffs in-house, which is, which is great. Just as, you know, Tom was mentioning, but is there a solution that you can utilize that is more cost effective and right. also will bring better, better quality as well. Um, you know, faster, faster turnaround time, um, you know, which, which can bring in more business in. So, you know, just thinking out and that's why we do these kind of webinars and, um, you know, it's a, it, you know, takeoff monkey is a great solution. Uh, you know, Tommy and, uh, you know, yeah. we thank you for joining us tonight. Do you have any last, list uh you know things you'd like to share with us here tonight um i i yeah i mean just give us a try reach out to us we're we're real people we, it's not a robotic transaction at all it's it's very <laughs> one on one um you can call me i'll talk to you as long as you want me to um but yeah takeoffmonkey.com or you can email me or janet tommy at or janet at um and we're uh, we're happy to take care of you however we can Awesome. Yeah. And, and, and we just put the website for, for takeoff monkey in the comments as well. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, they can, you know, type in the chat here or, you know, definitely reach out to Tommy. Um, and, uh, you know, no, this was, this was awesome stuff. Yeah, no, I I really like this and I appreciate you coming on Tommy. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Sure. I hope everyone has a great night. We'll see you at the next Landscaping Account webinar. Yeah, thank you, everybody. See you later. Bye.